There are many words to describe this hotel. Two of them happen to be tourist trap. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point, narrated video tours about hotels and flights all over the world. This is episode number 108 and today we're at the Rio Plaza España. My snarky intro aside, this place does have the best view in all of Madrid, so stick around to check it out for yourself. Welcome to Plaza España in Madrid, with an almost impossibly blue sky. So the tourist trap comment is 90% about the rooftop and just 10% about the hotel itself. There's no way of getting around the fact that this is a giant hotel in a relatively small footprint, with limited common areas. Spread out over 26 floors, this hotel has 583 rooms. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid, my next 5 videos in queue, or info about all of the gear that I use on a daily basis, check out the description below. With the number of people that walk through here or check in and check out daily, this lobby is tiny. Located in the historic Edificio España, the 8th tallest building in Madrid, originally constructed in 1953, this Ryu opened its doors in this space in August of 2019. Whether you're here doing research for your next trip, reliving a past one, or perhaps you just have autoplay on and have no idea how you got here, I appreciate you checking the channel out and hope that you'll give this video a big thumbs up and perhaps subscribe for three new videos each week. Feel free to also check out my Patreon linked in the description below. A big thank you in advance. As we check out the lobby bar, I'll note that besides breakfast, all of the food venues in the hotel serve the same tapas and drinks menu, which I'll give you a peek at in a bit. One thing I do give them two big thumbs up for is the elevator system. It has to be the most efficient one that I've seen, like ever. Scan your keycard and it will give you a limited choice of floors to go to, including your room's floor and the other common area floors that are open at that time. Tap your final destination and it tells you which elevator to head to. First up, we're going to head straight up to the roof, which is, with a capital A, always busy. This is me walking out right as it opened at 11 a.m. Note that the rooftop is open to non-hotel guests for, I believe, 10 euro entrance fees. So the elevator system also provides an added layer of security. No matter what you think of the hotel, though, there is no denying that the views from up here are breathtaking in every single direction. For those unfamiliar, let's take a closer look at where we are. Madrid, the capital city of 3.3 million people, is located smack in the middle of the country and is sprawling. Transportation is efficient though, so a taxi or metro ride from the airport to the hotel will take around 30 minutes, and the taxis here actually have decent, affordable rates compared to some of the other Western European cities. At first glance, the hotel may seem to be at the edge of the city, but so are many of the sites that you may be coming here to see. So it was very well positioned to get around in what has become my favorite walking city on earth. The newly renovated Plaza España is dominated by the Rio and neighboring Barcelona. All of the menus come from a QR code and those websites don't work on desktops. So this screen grab is the best that I could do to give you an idea of the food that's on offer here and in the other venues. It's basic and pricey and service at best was slow. Before I forget, let me just point out that rather than have a simple system like every other hotel on earth, their Wi-Fi requires a unique username and password, which will only be generated once you receive your room key. Ryu Hotels also began operating in 1953 and are currently the second largest hotel brand in Spain by revenue with their 109, mostly sun destination focused hotels and resorts across the world. Ryu is now also owned by Tui Travel, something that I had no clue about until about four minutes ago. A level or two lower is the Eden restaurant, which they oddly enough refer to as a gastro bar.
There's also an outdoor pool which is just around the corner but was not yet open due to the weather when I was there. So two interesting bits, to me at least. For the first time, I lost a piece of footage somehow. Luckily it was just walking down the hallway to my room, so this substitution will do just fine instead. Second thing, I was originally given a dark and drab room in the rear of the hotel with a lovely view of a wall which you could barely even see since the windows were all frosted. It was a true gem, and yes, I did pay for a city view room, and this apparently qualifies as such. I complained at the front desk, they claimed that they were near capacity, which I did actually believe, and gave me only one other option to upgrade to a room for 20 euros per night. I thought it was a ripoff considering the first room should have been fine had the windows not been frosted and it actually had a city view, but okay, I'm gonna stop complaining now because in the end I really did enjoy the room that I moved to. The room that I ended up in was a corner unit with plenty of space to spread out and the sofa can also turn into an extra bed, which there was also plenty of space for. The rooms have all the modern amenities that you'd expect and are nicely decorated in what is becoming a typical big box Spanish style. The bathroom was large, bright, and modern with a double vanity and additional space to put your things on the shelf below. Products were partially in tamper-proof bulk bottles and partially in mini plastic bottles. The windows were nice and large with great views, but a bit of a pain since you needed to prop them open with something or else they just keep swinging open and shut. Opening the windows was also the only way to adjust, or in this case turn off, the relentless heat which was not otherwise controllable. Keep in mind that I was here during a very cold snap in April. The two things that I really didn't enjoy in the room though were the scratchy industrial carpeting or whatever you call this kind of flooring material and the almost equally scratchy bed sheets with a cheap felt blanket instead of a proper duvet. In the mornings, breakfast began at seven o'clock and filled up very quickly. The food on offer was fine and probably in line with what you'd expect, even if it did feel a bit more like a budget cruise line than it did a four-star urban hotel. All right, so as we head into the flip-flop score, what are we thinking? Eh, it, it was okay. You could surely do better, but during some times of the year, the hotel does offer a decent value, especially if this is the part of the city that you wanna stay in. It was clean, modern, and mostly comfortable, and sometimes that's just about all you need. 
I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for three new videos each week. I will see you next time on my Air France flight to Paris.